Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to be covering this precision primer gauge by Accuracy One Shooting Supplies. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Guys, for today's video, we're going to be covering this precision primer gauge by Accuracy One Shooting Supplies. I actually found this on another YouTuber's page. His channel's name is F Class John. I'm going to put a link down in the description box below so you guys can check him out after you're done watching today's video. He's got some very interesting content on some very niche subjects. I think if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance you're going to be interested in a lot of his other content. Think about subscribing to his channel if you like what you see. Just for full disclosure, guys, I want to make sure you're aware I actually paid full price for this item. This was not sent as a review unit. I picked this up because I want to be able to do some testing going forward here on the channel, and I thought it was going to help me do it. I did film an unboxing for this. I might roll some of the ad as we go through some of the details on this. The short version is it was shipped very well, very sturdy, got here all in one piece. It's packaged very well, comes in a nice box. But let's get right into our tool here. This is the Precision Primer Gauge by Accuracy One Shooting Supplies. Let's start by getting our tool out of our box. I'm a bit of a sucker for having a nice case. This tool certainly comes with one, though the extra body I bought doesn't exactly fit in there, but all the rest of it does. Some of you guys might be wondering why you'd want a primer pocket gauge. After we kind of walk through the tool, we'll show you the uses for it, walk through a couple scenarios, and honestly, why I bought it. I've actually been looking for a tool like this for quite a while, and I just didn't know what I was looking for. But Thank goodness for YouTube, it allows us to find some tools that we might not have even known existed otherwise. And just so you guys can find it, I'll put a link in the description box below if you're interested in it. Um, there's no commission for me or anything like that. It's going to go to a site, I believe it's called bullettipping.com, where you can find out the information to order this. I did have to make a phone call to order this. There's no online ordering system. If you're interested in purchasing one of these after you've seen the video, just so you know, it's kind of a small shop that makes these. If a whole bunch of people decide they want one of these, it's very likely they're not going to be in stock. Please be patient. It's a small operation. They're good people. were very nice to me. They answered all the questions that I had, and I was very impressed with the service. But again, it's a small place, so I'm really not sure how many orders they can handle all at once. Just so you know. Let's get right into our tool. In our tool, we're going to get our primer pocket measuring device. We get two zeroing blocks. And we also get the conversion for small primers versus the large primer adapter that's already installed. You can actually order this tool with or without the indicator. If you have another indicator laying around from another tool, you might want to consider buying that. However, for this particular device, I will say I do recommend having the digital indicator. If you're really good with analog gauge, maybe you won't care. I put my analog gauge on it, though I do certainly prefer this for my concentricity gauge. I certainly prefer the digital for this primer pocket gauge, but teach them to their own. So overall, it's really simple. You've got your digital indicator. You've got your insert for either large or small. Like I said, this is this is for the large. You've got your zeroing blocks. It comes with zeroing blocks for a 223 case head, 308 case head, a case head for a 300 Win Mag, as well as 338 Lapua. The caveat to this whole system is the body, and that's why I have two. <clears throat> the body, which you can buy separately for $40 if you choose to. That's what I did. Both come with a 223 or 308, but you have to decide between 300 Win Mag and 338 Lapua, one or the other. I bought the second body so I could do both. I hate compromises, and for $40, I thought, why not? And I do think this is going to be an interesting tool, but let's get into everything. The important things you need to know, you can actually see that there's a flat side and also like a concave side. The con this concave side is specifically when you're actually doing the primer pocket measuring on your brass. When you're actually measuring your seated primers, you're going to use the flat side. Or at least that's what it says in the directions. If you decide to change, I guess that's on you. We're going to start out mostly by looking at primer pockets. So we're going to start with the concave side down. You're going to notice that our digital indicator has had the end removed. He did include it. I actually purchased it with the indicator. You can purchase it without and save $50. But again, decision you need to make. Put on our die body. Insert it, screw it on with our nylon nut. Don't need to over torque it. Finger tight's going to do just fine. And then we're going to need our zeroing block. We're going to use our 308 headed case. So we're going to pick our zeroing block. Insert our zeroing block and zero out our case. Hopefully you can easily see with our zeroing it's on there. And once we release it, we're going to get a different number. That number isn't going to mean anything to us. But now that we have our zero, we can start measuring. And let's bring out some cases just to show exactly how this works. 
These are some six millimeter Creedmoor cases that I had for some factory ammo that I was intending to reload. I thought this would be a good time to see how this worked. I've actually used it on several lots of brass now. I'm still learning, but I think I have the gist of most everything down. Like I said, we have our concave side. We're going to insert in there and you're going to be able to get your measurement. If I could hold it steady, you could see that it's rotating roughly 129 and a half thousandths. And if I could actually put the primer pocket in focus, which I probably won't be able to do, if I could get the camera to focus, maybe you guys can see that the primer pockets on these have been uniformed. Hopefully make the primer pocket depth consistent throughout the lot. To perform this operation, we use our Sinclair primer pocket uniformer tool. I think I have a separate video on this that I can link in the description box below if you're interested. But the gist of it, the, these are fixed depth, so they're not adjustable. But you uh, can uniform the depth of your primer pocket either with a hand tool or with an adapter for your drill. I'm far too lazy for the hand tool, but, so I pretty much just use the drill. If you're just going to be cleaning the primer pockets and not trying to remove any material, uh, the hand tool would do you just fine, I'm certain. We're, we're going to get into a reason why this might be important besides I want to do some testing with it. You're going to notice some factory ammo over here. We're going to talk about it too. Um, I could run through this whole lot if you wanted to. You're going to see roughly 129.5. Um, it uniformed pretty close. It's usually pretty close to that 129.5 after it's been uniformed. If you run into one heavy, I actually look and the this one barely got uniformed. So you can see the primer pocket on this case is a little bit deeper than the others. So depending on what you wanted to do, you could call that case. It's only half by half a thousand. I guess you have to decide what you want to do. This is one of the Hornady cases that actually had not been uniformed. Without having this tool, we wouldn't have been able to see the variation we had on our cases besides in just uniforming them to a uniform depth. That's not going to be this tool's only job. This is also going to help us evaluate our primer seating procedure. At least that's one of the hopes of why I bought it. Let's look at some actual seated primers to see what that looks like. Keeping in mind, we're going to have to reverse our insert. So as you can see, we've re-zeroed it. We're going to actually be looking at some factory 30-06 brass. One of the things this tool should be able to do is evaluate variation. Variation is the enemy of reloaders. It may not seem like a big deal, but if our primers are seated to varying depths, that actually could affect how hard our firing pin hits it and affect our ignition. And that's certainly one of the things that I'm wanting to evaluate as we move forward. But just for fun, I thought I'd pick on some factory 30-06 brass, and you can see this is seated to a depth four thousandths below the case head. As we move down our line, it's four and a half thousandths. Moving down a little further, we're at five thousandths. Further yet, five and a half. On our other side of our spectrum, we have one that's about three thousandths. So from three to five and a half, depending on your firing pin protrusion, this the variation in just this small lot of 30-06 brass might be a big deal. I don't know, but without this tool, I wouldn't have been able to measure it. So that's one of the things I'm going to do going forward. One of the things I've also showed here on the channel before is this is a primer seeder with, without the primer tray uh, from Frankfurt Arsenal. It has the distinct feature of having a wheel where you can set the primer depth and restrict how far you can push that primer in. Um, but I was never really able to set it or change it, um, so I knew exactly the way I wanted it to. And I think this tool is going to help me evaluate a couple other products that I've been wanting to show you guys. I'm sure some of you might point out that you can probably use a caliper to, to try and measure this dimension. This tool makes it much faster to be able to take those measurements. But just as a quick review, guys, we can measure the primer pocket depth. We can measure the seated primer depth. If we use this tool in the zeroing gauge, we can actually also measure the primer thickness. If you're just starting out reloading, I'm not sure this is a have to type of tool. But if you're wanting to evaluate some of your rounds, look at some of your cases, this might be a tool you might want to think about getting. I know that I wasn't concerned with my concentricity until I got a concentricity gauge. And then I found ways of making my concentricity better. So now that I've got a primer pocket gauge, I know I'm going to be able to evaluate my primer seating process and hopefully make it better. And I'm sure I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. Even if you're not interested in the primer pocket gauge, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you put those in the comments section below. If you like the content here on the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. Make sure now that you're done watching this video, you go check out F Class John's channel. He's got some interesting stuff and he's been posting a lot lately. So go subscribe to him. I hope to see you guys back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.